I've made a lot of videos on helping you fix your game in the Crucible. I never thought I'd be actually fixing the Crucible itself. The Crucible needs an overhaul. You know it, I know it, your neighbor's dog knows it. We're now nearly a full month into Beyond Light and we've seen next to nothing in terms of Crucible content. In fact, with sunset weapons and maps, and with trials continued to be delayed, we're actually negative net content from before Beyond Light. Iron Banner returned this week with years old armor and reprised weapons. The problem with the Crucible has been, and likely will continue to be, a lack of a concrete reason to play it for anyone who doesn't like the part where you shoot the mans in the face. Crucible needs to matter to the average Destiny player. The loot cycle is, frankly, dead. And the time spent in any playlist doesn't match the rewards compared to literally any other PvE equivalent. Why would I go into Trials for Ascendant Shards and face the myriad of issues that plagued that game mode when I could do it in half the time in PvE? Something about the Crucible experience is broken in a very, very big way. So, I took it upon myself to fix it. This video is my version of a better Crucible experience for all. My name is Ascendant Nomad, and I'm your Crucible Doctor. There's a lot of different angles you could take with this. There's the endgame PvP experience, where we have trials as this pinnacle activity, but nothing really there to help you get better along the way. Competitive feels heavily underutilized and could probably do with a ranked ladder system of some kind. There's also the general, why does PvP even matter side of things, where beyond the initial leveling for power grind, it just doesn't have much use after you reach the pinnacle cap. And then finally, there's the, I just wanna have fun in PvP angle, which should ideally offer different PvP experiences. You guys remember Rift? The problem is that focusing on one specific approach ends up doing a massive disservice to the general populace of the Crucible, because people play it for different reasons. Destiny PvP hasn't really been a priority for Bungie, and the one time they publicly said it was, they broke both legs on the landing. The Crucible experience is fractured, unfocused, and very much left to be what the individual player makes of it. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does leave a lot of promise on the table. The Crucible is not short on players, it's the second most popular place people spend their time at the time of writing, so fleshing out a proper version for it wouldn't be a complete waste of time. At the very least, give us a real reason to keep playing this activity beyond the subjective joy of clicking heads. It's year seven. We know what gets people playing new activities in Destiny and coming back for more. It's the loot. And that's primarily the angle I'm going to be taking with this video. How do we flesh out the core experience and loot for the Crucible? What can we add to the existing drops, good joke, that would make the player's time feel valued? What chases can we create where players keep coming back for more, similar to how people keep coming back for double nightfall drops? It was clear when I was planning these ideas that there needed to be not just tweaks to the loot pool, but to the overall Crucible experience itself. And that was a job that, quite honestly, I wasn't able to do alone. So, I sat down with my good friend Nyrus. Yes, the same Nyrus of weekly infographic fame. He's been an ever-present in the wider Destiny community, delivering infographics every single reset filled with the useful information that shows you what each weekly activity has reset to, as well as any particular loot available. He does it for Zur and for Trials as well. He was also the subject of a Bungie community spotlight. I think you get the idea. Nyrus is good. Very, very good. Together, we created a set of graphics that you're about to see. These graphics change the appearance of the Crucible, but retain the destiny soul that we've come to love. I don't want to lead you on too much, but we focus on creating a dystopian version that isn't too far removed from our own world right now. I think this reality that we've created is very possible. A final disclaimer. I'm not a developer. Far from it. I'm just a creative who creates things for entertainment. So don't take any of it too seriously. I'm just trying to make my channel properly relevant for the algorithm by making rage bait content. If you want to get salty at any one of my suggestions, I do feel compelled to ask you to remember the words of the great Ilya Brizgalov. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad?
Right. Enough foreplay. Let's dive in. Welcome to the new Crucible. Clean, no-nonsense, direct, and focused. The idea was to organize what we have and what we've experienced, not to reinvent the wheel entirely. So for this time around, we've just kept it to three categories. Casual, competitive, and labs. With this, you can pick and choose what kind of experience you want to have. It also makes labs a thing instead of the awkward on-again, off-again thing that oddly resembles the Destiny community's relationship with Emtashed? There's a reason we revived Labs, and I'll get to it later. Let's look at Casual first. All Casual playlists are matchmade via connection-based matchmaking. When you just want to play a game with no stakes, you don't want that game to lag and be borderline unplayable. At least, I have the tools to fight back against formidable players rather than being subject to bad netcode which is completely out of my control. Another change we made was to make the majority of the playlist 5v5 instead of 6v6. With the exception of a few maps, I think the majority of the Crucible would play a lot better right now with a player or two less on the field. Right now, the 4 or 5 viable maps on offer do suffer from overcrowding and strange spawn locations. The majority of those 7th column clips you see online usually come as a result of someone catching someone who's just spawned. Now for the playlists themselves. We have Quick Play, Mayhem, Momentum, and Rumble. Quick Play is a standard rotator of Clash, Control, and Supremacy. Mayhem is for the wilder game modes in rotation currently like Mayhem Clash, Team Scorched, and maybe even Mayhem Control if that ever becomes a thing. Momentum is its own category because of momentum control, and I think it's a game mode that has a place in casual playlists as a spiritual successor to Halo SWAT game mode. Finally, Rumble because you just don't mess with the classics. Rumble is one of the best playlists in Destiny's history. It's Beans on Toast, Bangers and Mash, Black Pudding, Love Island, all universal classics. The casual category will employ the Valor ranking system, which is shared across all playlists and will be largely unchanged. The loot, however, will be. And we'll get to that. Let's talk about the competitive section. There are now five playlists. Survival, Skirmish, Elimination, Showdown, and Freelance. All of these will be 3v3, unchanged from what it is now. And Freelance will be the solo entry playlist. Survival is Survival. No changes there. Skirmish is 3v3 Clash. For the more recent players of Destiny, Skirmish used to be a mainstay in Destiny 1 until it was bizarrely culled for Destiny 2. Elimination, same as ever. The closest thing you'll get to Trials without Saint 14. I included Showdown here because it is a game type with a lot of potential, but it definitely isn't without its problems. It offers a unique enough take on Slayer slash Survival to warrant its inclusion here. Freelance is the solo playlist, which will be a mix of everything above. Hold up. Why so many playlists? Wouldn't that cause population split? Maybe. But I think it will be offset by just how many people would actually start playing in the competitive section. I see competitive as the cornerstone of the endgame experience for Destiny 2's PvP. Just as PvE has raids, nightfalls, and dungeons, PvP deserves its own unique set of challenges. We need more ways to test our skills and be given the opportunity to show off the stuff that we get only from completing certain milestones and achievements within these modes. As we'll go over in a second, each game mode has playlist-specific loot, which will serve to be the main catalyst for getting people to play the added game modes. All playlists will employ an improved version of skill-based matchmaking, which casts the net a little wider at the top end so that connections aren't absolutely god-awful at the higher ranks. There should be some effort made to establish skill brackets, but with some overlap. Like 0.3 to 0.8 KD would be a range, 0.5 to 1.0 KD would be a range, and 0.8 to 1.2 KD would be a range. 
The reason for the overlap is to allow the system to find a larger pool of players in order to find matches faster and to prioritize connection within established skill brackets. I don't think you should ever have to compromise connection for a safer perceived gaming experience for some. An unplayable, laggy game is no fun for anyone involved, irrespective of your skill. With that being said, let's talk about ranks. The ranking system would still be glory, and still involve a grind to legend rank which starts at 5450. Yes, you heard me right. It starts at 5450 because it's an uncapped rank, meaning you can accumulate as many points as you wish. This is for two reasons, pinnacle loot and bragging rights. This would be the PvP equivalent of a 300,000 score emblem from a Nightfall in PvE. The actual glory divisions are unchanged, but now to determine your true glory, there would be a placement system that factors in your individual performances only. After 10 games, you would be assigned a base rank between Guardian and Legend. You would not be placed higher than Mythic 1. To rank up, you would have to perform well and improve your own MMR, or matchmaking rating, which would be heavily performance-based. In theory, you could gain points if you performed very well on the losing team. Win rate does help to smooth progress, but it is not essential. If you are a consistently high performer, you will rank up given enough time. MMR would also be contextual, taking into account of the average MMR of the opponents you face. You would gain more glory if you beat a team that is more skilled than you. You would also lose more points if you lose to a team that you should be beating. But if you performed rather well, that loss would be offset somewhat. Basically, irrespective of the matchups, I would have MMR be all about you and your performance at the end of the day. It's important that there are consequences to your rank. You could lose points between subdivisions within a rank, like dropping down from Mythic 3 to 2, but you would never drop down divisions. Rank flaws would be established at Brave, Heroic, Fabled, Mythic, and Legend, meaning that if you had reached those levels, you would not go down below them. At Legend, you'd have a chance to earn some of the best weapons, armor, and material in the game as you continue to play and accrue wins. You would inherently earn less glory per win as your MMR would contribute to a higher team average, and you would lose more glory if you lost, making the endgame grind for certain rank-based rewards past Legend challenging. If this sounds a little hokey, just remember, I did warn you. Creative, remember? Oh, and one more thing. Ranks would now be per playlist, rather than a global rank. This would enable people to selectively grind for playlist-specific rewards, or to just tailor their own experience better. There would also be activity-specific crucible triumphs. Before we delve into the real meat of the revamp, let's talk about labs for a second. In the new Crucible, labs has been redefined to be a true public test area for developers to experiment with new ideas and for the community to leave feedback on their favorite forums. This is where you would find some of the more wacky game modes in play. Right now, I just have placeholders here. Twilight, Clash and Control are basically hardcore modes for Destiny. No super and no radar, just pure gunplay. I think a lot of people would love there to be a stripped down version of the Crucible this way. Locked in is a mode I would love for Bungie to develop. It's normal clash, but restricted loadouts, similar to how Prestige Leviathan used to lock you out of certain weapons. It wouldn't quite be locked loadouts in terms of the same weapons for everyone, but it would be a step in the right direction for Bungie to assess a true competitive experience for a future season. Due to the experimental and temporary nature of labs, there wouldn't be any specific rewards aside from your typical Valor rank gains. I'd probably put some triumphs in place for a potential title grind, but nothing exorbitant. The whole idea of labs is to get people playing it and participating in a non-trivial way. Okay, I've kept you waiting long enough. Let's talk loot. The goal of any repeatable activity is to make it matter. Crucible has no true endgame experience right now outside of Trials. But even then, the chance of one Ascendant Shard and some Prisms is the most we get for, at minimum, 45 minutes of intensely difficult Crucible. It's a pitiful return for the time invested into the game mode. So let's imagine an endgame experience that doesn't insult our time. As with PvE, the best loot must lie behind the hardest challenges. 
the hardest challenges lie in competitive. So let's look at it. From Guardian to Fabled, or 0 to 2100, each subdivision rank up will give you plus 25 planetary materials and a mid stat roll armor guaranteed with a chance of getting a high stat roll and an even slimmer chance of getting an exotic. From Fable to Legend, each subdivision rank up will give you pinnacle armor with high stat rolls. There will be a degree of duplicate protection so that you don't get five helmets in a row, for example. There would also be a chance to get an exotic as well, but it would be under 15%. You would only get these rewards the first time you cross each rank subdivision. As outlined before, you can move between subdivisions depending on your performances, so we don't want to have a system where you're freely throwing games for free pinnacle loot. Between each major division, there will be different rewards for crossing the threshold. At Brave, you get one enhancement core. At Heroic, you get four cores, plus a guaranteed high stat armor roll. At Fabled, you get 7 cores, an Enhancement Prism, and a guaranteed high stat armor roll. At Mythic, you get 4 Prisms and an Ascendant Shard, plus a guaranteed Exotic. At Legend, you get 3 Shards, 7 Prisms, and 7 cores, plus a guaranteed Exotic. This might be a bit too much, but since you can only get them once, why be stingy? Also reminder, we're being armchair developers right now, so you mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. The end of match rewards should be more weighted to seasonal and vendor drops. Less blues, please. Add those all in, and we've already got a massively improved selection of loot on offer. But wait, there's more. Remember how I said that competitive ranks were playlist specific? That's entirely for loot and replayability purposes. The above rank rewards are per playlist, meaning by the end of your five playlist grind to 5500, you would get five times the rewards for your time commitment. Additionally, you would also have universal ornaments to chase that are locked behind different playlists. Each playlist has their own custom design set of ornaments, so you could chase the survival set or the elimination set. Let's take the elimination playlist. Here's how I'd stagger the ornaments. The class item ornament would come at heroic or 1050 glory. At 2100 or fabled, I'd give you the leg armor ornament. At Mythic 2, which is 3880, I'd give you the Chest Armor Ornament. At the Old Cap of Legend at 5500, I'd give you the Gauntlet Ornament. At a rank that I'm calling Legend Plus, which is 7000 Glory, you get the Helmet Ornament. And at Legend Plus Plus, which is 7777 rank, you get the OG Trials Cat Emblem. And you'd have a version for this in every playlist, link to triumphs for additional rewards, bragging rights, and an immediate plus 10 to your charisma IRL to help you with all the, the sex. For valor and casual laps, it would be a more basic experience. We inject upgrade materials at the major division rankups. At Brave, you get one core. At Heroic, you get three cores. Fabled gives you seven cores. Mythic is seven cores and one prism. Legend is one Ascendant Shard and three prisms. And at reset, you get one shard, three prisms, and a guaranteed high stat legendary armor roll or exotic. Since Valor can be reset and farmed easily on double Valor weeks, it wouldn't make too much sense to make the rewards super high. In addition, the endgame rewards should be more weighted to seasonal and vendor armor and weapon drops. Less blues, please. I originally wrote this script in December of last year. But life happened and nothing really came of it. Now, nearly a year later and seven months after the reintroduction of Trials, Crucible is still in this weird limbo state that if not for the impeccable sandbox tuning this season, it's close to being worse than when I first wanted to change it. And that's a problem. And I decided to revive this video concept because of it. This video doesn't have much of a purpose in truth. It's just a creative exercise born out of being tired at being disappointed. No matter what happens with The Crucible and Destiny 2, I'll always still play it, and I'll keep making videos on it. This was a more constructive way of venting out my frustrations, and I hope, sincerely, that the future is brighter for our favorite games multiplayer. A huge thank you and shout out again to Nyrus for coming up with all of these incredible visuals. 
You, my friend, are the real MVP of this video. I could not have done it without you. But what did you think? Leave a comment below with your thoughts. I'm sure you've done so already before coming to the end, but if you haven't, please DM me on Twitter or stop by my stream on Twitch. I've got a lollipop waiting just for you. As ever, if you like this video, you know what to do. Thank you so much for sticking to the end and watching this video. I'm Ascendant Nomad, and I'm your Crucible Doctor. Cheers.